Hello everyone and welcome to Math Defined. In today's lesson, we'll be tackling division with decimal numbers. We'll kick things off with a straightforward example where the divisor, or the number we're dividing by, is a whole number. But don't worry, decimal divisors are coming up later in this video. When the divisor is a whole number, the first step is to bring the decimal point up into the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. Then you just divide like you normally would until you have a zero remainder or a repeating pattern of one or more digits. Let's tackle this division problem first. The first step is to bring the decimal point up to the quotient from the dividend. Now we're ready to begin the division process. First, we divide the divisor of 2 into the first digit in the dividend, which in this case is also a 2. 2 divides into 2 one time, so we place this 1 up in the quotient. Next, we multiply 1 times 2, which is 2. Then we subtract, and 2 minus 2 is 0. The next step is to bring down the next digit in the dividend, so we'll bring down this 6 and we'll repeat the whole division process again until we have a zero remainder or a repeating pattern of one or more digits. So to continue the division process, 2 divides into 6 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, and we'll bring down the next digit of 3. Repeating the division process once again, 2 divides into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtracting 2 from 3 is 1, and we'll bring down the next digit of 4. This time, we need to divide 2 into 14, and 2 divides into 14 7 times. 7 times 2 is 14, and when we subtract 14 from 14, we get 0. This time, we will not bring down another digit for two reasons. The first reason is that there are no more digits in the dividend to bring down. The second reason is that we have a zero remainder. Remember, when dividing with decimal numbers, the division process keeps repeating until you have a zero remainder or a repeating pattern of one or more digits. So the decimal number, 2.634 divided by 2, is 1 and 317 thousandths. Now let's solve this one. The divisor for this division problem is also a whole number, so we start by bringing the decimal point up to the quotient from the dividend first. Now we can divide. 5 divides into 0, 0 times. So now we need to look at the next digit in the dividend, which is also a 0, and again 5 divides into 0, 0 times. The next digit is a 7. 5 divides into 7 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtracting 5 from 7, we get 2. Now we have a problem. There are no digits to bring down from the dividend, and we do not have a zero remainder or a repeating pattern in the quotient. So what we need to do is to add a zero to the dividend. Since the dividend is a decimal number, this zero does not change the value, but it allows us to continue the division process. We will bring it down and continue dividing. 5 divides into 20 4 times. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. Now that we have a 0 remainder and no digits left in the dividend to bring down, we are done. I chose to show you this division problem next because the quotient will have a repeating digit. The divisor again is a whole number and we start by bringing the decimal point from the dividend up to the quotient. Now we can divide. 9 divides into 3, 0 times. Looking at the next digit of 7, we have the number 37. 9 divides into 37, 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36. Subtracting 36 from 37, you get 1. Then we bring down the next digit of 7. I really like drawing these arrows when I am dividing because it is easier to keep track of which digits have been brought down especially when the digits in the dividend repeat, like this one. So now we have 17, and 9 divides into 17 one time. After subtracting 9 from 17, we have 8 left over, so we need to bring down the next 7. Now we have 87, and 9 divides into 87 9 times. 87 minus 81 is 6. 
We don't have any digits left in the dividend, but we need to keep dividing because we have this remainder of six and no repeating digits in the quotient. So we'll add this zero and bring it down to get 60. Nine divides into 60 six times. And after subtracting 54 from 60, we have the same remainder again of six like we had last time. If we add another zero and bring it down, you can see that we have 60 again. And again, nine divides into 60 six times. So now you can see that there will always be this repeating digit of six in the quotient. And because of this, we are done dividing. The line above the six is a symbol showing that this digit of six infinitely repeats. Now let's switch gears here a bit, and instead of a whole number divisor, we have a decimal number. When the divisor is a decimal number, the first step is to convert the divisor into a whole number. So right now we have 1.4, and if we multiply it by 10, that will allow us to move this decimal point one place to the right, and we will have the whole number 14. But we are not done. To keep this expression balanced, we need to multiply the dividend by 10, which will move the decimal point in the dividend one place to the right as well. So 18.2 becomes 182. And now we have a whole number in the divisor, and we can divide like we normally would after placing the decimal point from the dividend up into the quotient. Since 14 cannot divide into one, we'll move to the next digit to get the number 18. 14 divides into 18 one time. Next we multiply, and 1 times 14 is 14. Then we subtract to get a difference of 4. Now we bring down the next digit in the dividend, and we have the number 42. Repeating the process again, 42, I'm sorry, 14 divides into 42 three times, and 3 times 14 is 42. After subtracting, we have a zero remainder. With no more digits to bring down from the dividend, we are done. Here again, we have a divisor that is a decimal number. I want to show you this problem because it is important for you to see that just because the divisor must be a whole number, the dividend does not. So this time, our divisor has two decimal digits, and in order for us to convert it to a whole number, we need to multiply it by 100 so that the decimal point will move two places to the right to create this whole number of nine. And don't forget, to keep this expression balanced, we need to multiply the dividend by 100, moving its decimal point two places to the right as well. The last step before we begin the division process is to move the decimal point from the dividend up to the quotient. Now, do you see that the dividend is not a whole number, but the divisor is? As long as the divisor is a whole number, it doesn't matter whether the dividend is a whole number or not. Now we can start the division process. Nine does not divide into one, so moving on to the next digit, we have the number 10. And nine divides into 10 one time. Multiplying one times nine is nine, and then subtracting nine from 10, we have a remainder of one. We need to bring down the next digit of five from the dividend and repeat the process again. 9 divides into 15 one time. 15 minus 9 is 6, and we're ready to bring down the next digit from the dividend. Now we have the number 63, and 9 divides into 63 exactly 7 times. Now that we have a zero remainder with no digits left in the dividend to bring down, we are done. Now this problem presents a unique challenge that many students solve incorrectly. We have a decimal divisor and a whole number dividend. Can you guess the mistakes that so many students make with this type of dividend? Well, let me show you. We know that the divisor must be a whole number, so we will need to multiply it by 10, and that will make the decimal point move one place to the right. And remember, we need to do the same multiplication by 10 to the dividend, and this is where mistakes happen. Looking at this dividend, we don't actually see any decimal point. So you might think that you are done moving the decimal point because there isn't one. But you need to remember that all numbers, including whole numbers, have a decimal point. The difference is that with whole numbers that do not have a decimal number with it, 
we can just skip placing a decimal point. But there is one there even if you don't physically see it. So let's place the decimal point in this whole number after the 8 in the 1's place. Now we will multiply this dividend by 10 and the decimal point will move one place to the right. And we need to place a 0 here as a placeholder. The last step before dividing is moving the decimal point from the dividend up to the quotient. Now we are ready to begin the division process. 2 divides into 2 one time. After subtracting, we have a 0 remainder. Now we can bring down the 4 and repeat the process again. 2 divides into 4 two times and 4 minus 4 is 0. We'll bring down the next digit of 8 and repeat the process again. 2 divides into 8 four times and after subtracting we have another 0 remainder. We still have one more digit to bring down. This is another place where so many mistakes are made. You are not done dividing until every digit in the dividend has been brought down. And we know that 2 divides into 0 0 times and now we are done. Did you notice that I did not put a decimal point back into this whole number quotient? Since there are no decimal digits with this whole number, I can just skip placing the decimal point after the 0 in the 1's place. Thanks for learning with us today. I hope this video answered all of your questions. You'll want to check out these videos next. Until next time, keep math awesome.